is he the best candidate to defeat Donald Trump? So why is there such concern among, among a lot of Democrats about him? Well, there may be some concerns. Everybody's for One guy is really, really evil, and the other guy is not as good as I would like, but still good. Recently, there's been lots of talk, even among the left, about if Joe Biden is the right man to run again for president or if he should step back and let someone else. There's questions pertaining to his age, mental competency, ability to beat Trump again. But when we're discussing these things, I think there's three main points to focus on and consider. One, do you think he's the best candidate to beat Donald Trump right now? All things considered today, what would you weigh his odds? Two, does he or has he already moved the needle closer towards the goals that you want to see accomplished than Donald Trump or any other Republican would? And last, if you had a free slate choice of any Democrat, would he be your first choice? And does that matter if he's not? We're gonna discuss each of these things individually, but while you think about it, I wanna look at this clip on what Nancy Pelosi has to say about this exact topic. There's a lot of concerns about, about the president. Is he the best candidate to defeat Donald Trump, the best candidate to defeat any of the Republicans who are, are running right now? I think so. Uh, pre uh, yes, uh, President, uh, President Biden has, um, he has great experience and wisdom. He's been at this for a long time, as you know, as a senator, vice president, and now president. So why is there such concern among, among a lot of Democrats about him? Well, I, I travel a bit in those circles of Democrats, uh, nationally and politically, and while there may be some concerns, everybody's for him overwhelmingly. So I think she makes a good point about experience here. Obviously having someone in DC their whole life can be just as much of a negative as a positive, you know, not cycling in fresh minds, but it does allow him a unique perspective now having been on the three different levels, Senate, Vice President, and President now on vision and the how to get things done. And we see now with it being a surprisingly progressive agenda with the union stuff and everything else he's passed, him being able to do so by partisanly isn't from lack of experience. The fact that he's done this on every level enables him to get into these discussions and get these bills passed in ways that other presidents have not been able to. So for him, I do think the experience and the time he spent in DC has helped him with his presidency. When it comes to talking about Joe Biden and his presidency and all this on the left, there seems to be two camps that have formed, right? There's unbashed support for Joe Biden who lift up his pluses, his wins, and they turn a blind eye to maybe where he's failed. And then there's the unbashed hate for Joe Biden. The people who wanna tear down, say he hasn't done enough, but they wanna turn a blind eye to where he has succeeded, where he has succeeded. And I wanna come out and say that it's fine to be somewhere in the middle. I think that it's the correct place to be. That's where I am. I'm a realist, right? And you have to look at the situation that is in front of you and analyze it for what it is. Ask yourself, is Joe Biden the best candidate to beat Donald Trump? If we you know, swung in a new young progressive face uh, in the DNC, would they have a better chance of beating the incumbent president, beating someone who it would be a rematch from 2020 and who beat Donald Trump in 2020 and now has accomplished more things in their own presidency to also stand on and strengthen them. He's done more for student debt than any other president. This is despite the Supreme Court shooting it down originally. And yes, he shouldn't have means tested and used his executive action, but now he's trying to go at it through a different act and he's not giving up on it. He's passed the CHIPS Act. He's done the union, the car check certifications, and all the NLRB labor stuff that we've been talking about recently, the, the weed stuff he's passing. When you take all of these things into account, the argument for Biden beating Trump again not only becomes a clear one, but it becomes a strong one at that. So then it comes to asking yourself, well, okay, there's a strong argument that Biden will beat Trump, but does he really move the needle closer towards the goals that I want accomplished for America? And if you're a working class citizen, I think the answer is yes, by far. Joe Biden is one of the most pro-union presidents that we've ever had 
period. Trump never was. He's also trying to expand the overtime pay for salaried workers making $30,000 to $55,000. He's staying strong on the student debt stuff despite the Supreme Court shooting it down. He's trying to pass it through a different act now. Unemployment has been lower for longer under Biden than Trump. The GDP is better. There's more jobs. Wages are higher. By multiple facets of the economy, we're doing better under Biden than we were under Trump. And yes, a few years removed from a national pandemic, some of, some parts of the economy aren't working, but we don't have to dive too deep into that now. We have in other videos. And the with Trump, we know what we're going to get, though, right? We got tax cuts for the wealthy, tax cuts for corporations that massively cut our revenue and massively aid it to the inflation. Those same tax cuts would have had the middle class paying more in taxes by 2027. He also uh, dropped the foreign tax percent to zero, which incentivizes businesses to move overseas, thus taking more jobs from Americans, taking more revenue from America. So the answer is clearly Joe Biden is better in that facet, which is why I do find myself somewhere in the middle, as I do think he's the best candidate to beat Trump, who is someone who moves the needle the opposite direction from where I want to see. And he is someone that, even if just slightly, does move the needle the direction that I want to see America going. That is enough to get my vote. However, it's not enough to blind me from the detractors with Joe Biden. Like, yes, he should have just passed student debt with an executive order rather than means testing it and allowing it to be contested in court. Yes, he hasn't raised minimum wage. No, he's not focused on single payer health care. He's more moderate on some things that I would like him to be a lot more progressive on, some things that I wouldn't be moderate on. He's kind of like a conservative Democrat. There's plenty of contention that I would find with Joe Biden. But my third point here being, if he is the best candidate to beat Trump, if he is someone who moves the needle in your direction, does he have to be your first choice among Democrats? My answer would be no, he's not my first choice among Democrats, right? I think there's a plethora of more younger, stronger on progressive values, better speakers that better models and even role models for kids today, for the Democratic Party, for the left that would stand better than Joe Biden. But timing is a big thing. Support is a big thing. And a, a lot of what it comes down to is how many of these other candidates could beat Donald Trump. Now, with that being said, and timing being a big thing, Gavin Newsom is someone I do think with a lot of the things he's doing and a lot of the things he's saying right now, and especially with his debate and speaking ability, would be able to, I think, challenge Donald Trump with the right now, the situation that we're faced with here. But that does bring me to the other progressives, which is like, what, Gretchen Whitmer is someone I could support? Elizabeth Warren, obviously, Bernie Sanders, Roy Cooper. There, there's some very, Amy Klochuber. Uh, sorry if I, I think I botched it. But there's, there's a long list of progressive Democrats I would support. But how many of those progressives could step in right now and beat Donald Trump? Because I think it's very few of them. And I think with Joe Biden stepping away and being like, oh, I can't do this, that itself weakens the party's chance as a whole, regardless of who fills in to replace him. And there's always third party. And yes, third party aligns a lot more with my beliefs, a lot more with my goals. But does voting for a third party actually help move the needle towards those goals? No, it doesn't really because they're not going to win. And unfortunately, until we get ranked choice vo voting, that vote for a third party effectively is just helping Donald Trump, especially in swing states in the general, like in the primary, vote for whoever you want, right? Like I'm probably going to vote for Marianne Williamson, or I might even vote for Cornell West, right? But in the general election, I think it's important, especially if you're in a swing state, to remember what candidate is going to move the needle the direction you want to see it go and what candidate is going to move it the other way because that is the strongest argument for Joe Biden, in my opinion. The, the coalition of people we get around Joe Biden are football fields better than the coalition we're gonna get around Donald Trump. With Joe Biden, we get Elizabeth Warren. With Joe Biden, we get Bernie Sanders. We get a president who's gonna listen to these more progressive voices rather than the one who's gonna shut the door with them, right? That's why we've seen these union car check certifications, the overtime for salary workers, the CHIPS Act, the student loan stuff, the weed stuff. Do you think these are things in any reality that Joe Biden would sign into law on his own? No, this is an effect of the people around him. And when you vote for the president, it's important to remember you are also voting for the coalition of people around him. That is why 
it is okay to vote for Joe Biden. You're not going against your beliefs just because he's a little more moderate than you would like. The important thing to remember is which guy is going to advance your goals versus the guy who is going to move the needle in the wrong direction. Then it's best to remember who is the best guy that's gonna beat the guy who will move the needle in the wrong direction. And I believe that is Joe Biden. It is okay for him to not be your first pick if he is still the best pick that advances your goals. That's what's important to remember coming into these general elections. It's not the lesser of two evils. It's one guy is really, really evil, and the other guy is not as good as I would like, but still good and still much, much better than the other guy. If you enjoyed this video, we're a social society. We're a commentary channel influenced by politics, society, and the economy. We're pretty left-leaning here, but we are open to our right-wingers as well. The biggest thing for us is having conversations that get everyone to the bottom of the truth. If that sounds like something that can interest you, consider smashing that subscribe button, leaving us a like, or even commenting on this video, because the only way we become a society is together.